It's amazing how I, I bluff my way in, and this is true, because I couldn't type or, uh, or uh, at any shorthand or anything like that. But when I was interviewed, I wasn't interviewed because the, there was seven of us uh, being interviewed by the chief constable at that time, and they were all they'd all been interviewed but me, and uh, and I thought, oh well, that's it. You know, I wasn't worried because I wasn't clever. And uh, the next morning, I got a letter to say I'd got the job. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I mean, this was true. Yeah. And I went and I bluffed my way in, pretending as I could, um, that I could shorthand. I tried a bit. <laughs> and I, I tried a few keys, you know. And, but I did. I absolutely um, tried to, to play the game there mm. as they would wish it. Mostly, mostly they were very friendly. Yeah. Uh, particularly the mature ones, such mm. as uh, the sergeant who was in my office. And there was a, in my office there was the inspector, the sergeant and me. Mm. And uh, the sergeant always looked after the, 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 the female. You could sense it. Mm. The inspectors were mostly very nice, but there was one. I don't know whether you want to hear this, but uh, we had what we called watch out nights because of the bombs dropping, particularly where we were here. Uh, you see, Leckenfield was open and it was open to any bombing that night. So we always had night watches on at the Sessions House. This is the Sessions House. And we called it our our, our evening, our, our watch evening, that was it, we took our turn. And um, during, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, that was it. During one of, uh, there was always two of us slept in the uh, magistrate's room, if you know where that is, or oh, was, didn't they? Yeah. No. Uh, and uh, there was always two of us there, we had our beds in there. And it was one particular night that this friend of mine didn't turn up on, on time. She was, she'd been held up somewhere, so she wasn't coming till later. So the, there was a cheeky superintendent, I'm telling you this, it's true. Uh, there was a very cheeky superintendent there that had been trying to get his fingers on, on me for quite a while. And uh, this did happen. And uh, she hadn't arrived back. And uh, he got me in the kitchen. Unfortunately, he didn't. He tried. He tried to do things. But I always joked about that after and I said, no, I kept my hand over my head. And mm. You know how funny that is. And that was what was mentioned mm. then. And, uh, but he did, he did try. I mean, it, it was, and so I said to the sergeant, please don't mention it to the boss or anybody. Just keep it quiet, I don't want, I don't want him sucking, I don't want it, it's just been an error. But I said, don't say anything. Well, the sergeant in charge of me couldn't do that, you see. He had to say, oh no, I can't do that. Whatever happens here, I have to, I have to do something about it. So, of course, it went to the superintendent, it went to the uh, chief constable, rather. And the chief council had me shifted. Oh, heck. And I was sent down to the Beverly Division. Oh, that we didn't know what that yeah. was then. No? Yes, well, that Beverly Division was what now uh, was. You know the guild hall in Beverly near the post office? Well, yeah. all that at the back there was that part. Yeah. It started off 
um, up at the Sessions House, as I said, and when all this trouble happened about this superintendent, they thought we were ever moved. So they got me down to CID, the CID part. And oh, did I enjoy it. Oh, that was really super. I, I went out on all sorts of jobs. I went on suicides. All sorts of jobs I went out on. In fact, I was on the, I don't know what they call it, CID. Mm. And I loved it. I just loved that it was, uh, it, it was good. It was good. I didn't like what it meant. There's some very, very sad mm. cases, dragging them out of rivers. And, mm. uh, yeah. The CID part of it was... But I had some good sergeants with me who uh, were cheeky, who were very helpful. Mm. And knowing that I wanted to do this, they encouraged me. The uniform was just in, uh, trousers. It was trousers, wasn't it? No, skirt, sorry. Mm. Right. That's it, it was skirt and jacket and the yeah. uh, ordinary police hat. Yeah. Not a lot different today, you know, mm. in a right. way. Yeah. But it's not, it doesn't change a lot. Yeah. I was always yeah. with one of the senior detective who was a sergeant and uh, they were very good to work with. Mm -hmm. uh, I can always remember their names. Yeah. Did but you find it difficult to advance further? Well, what happened was my husband was away in the forces, he was out east and we'd been apart four years, both of us, and uh, when, he, uh, when he came, when I knew he was coming back, women didn't work. I mean, it was for, you know, you just make women just did not work. Once their husbands came home, their place yeah. was at home. Yeah. And so, before he came home, I was offered a place uh, in the regular police force that was in Scotland Yard. Mm. And I had the chance to go mm. to Scotland Yard and see what it was like. And there was a week set off for how many girls wanted to do it. Well, I couldn't put my name on, and my name didn't go on. But uh, but then had, I had the chance to go to Scotland Yard. Cranky. But whether I would have liked it or not, I don't know. Yeah. But it just wasn't. Women didn't work. Yeah. Once they came home, and I was too much in love mm. and married to, yeah. to have done that. Yeah. We, we had a rota. Mm. We used to have a rota. And of course we had the prisons, you know, the prison is so archaic, where the uh, post office is in Beverly, and where the Guildhall is next door, mm. next door to them was the um, p uh, police station, mm. where they used to be in at night. And I've often, I was on the telephones there for a while, and then I... I and I had prisoners in the cellars at the back. Mm. I've only brought that to, to mind to myself. <laughs> I've forgotten that. Yeah. And you were responsible, were you, for those those prisoners? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I did all sorts. I had the switchboard. I had the cellars at the back. And until one of the beat uh, policemen came off duty, mm. I was almost alone. Was that quite daunting? No, no. not at all. No, yeah. no, it wasn't scary at all. I had the phone. Mm. Uh, and we had divisions in those days, you know. It was divisions of police. There was Driffield, Bread, Hessel, Cottingham mm. and Beverly. And I used to do conferences on the phone whilst I was on near the phones and the prisoners in the back. And I used to give what we call conferences over that phone by detailing Hazel, yes, Cottingham, yes, you see, and until I got the four on, this is our cake, until we got the four or the six on, they would say, right, conference, and then I'd give them information 
uh, that that was coming over the phone, so they didn't know oh, what they had to do. Right, right. So. Can you remember the first time that you actually arrested somebody? Um, Can you remember that? No. I can't remember arresting anybody. I can remember telling them to clear off. And that was the... the um, all over, there was Cotting and Beverly and all the divisions had different types of soldiers being billeted and the, the best ones were the coloured ones in Cottingham. They were so easy. Um, you know, they had all these trees around the, uh, where they had their operations in Cottingham. That had, oh, th there was a lot of trees and things around this embankment of where these coloured soldiers lived. And uh, there, it, it was beautiful for them to have girls from Hull in the bushes to do what they wanted to do. <laughs> and uh, um, I just have to go around with a mucky job. <laughs> and I used to have to wade through all these bushes as they clear off. Yeah. They mostly come from East, uh, East Hull, not East Hull, the other side. Uh, there were girls, you know, and they were all oh, ever so young. And of course, I wasn't, I couldn't touch the colour, I couldn't touch the men. But they, as soon as I went into this, this verge of bushes where all this lot was going on, you couldn't see the coloured troops for dust. They used to go like that. <laughs> they was, yeah. The penalty was so bad yeah. if they were caught that uh, they, they, were the, they were the easiest yeah. to have got on with. Yeah, yes, well, they're st staying out of shops. Yeah. Uh, pinching, you know, out, out of shops or uh, uh, even uh, and any, anything really could pinch somebody's. I mean, there was thieves that pinched purses, what do they call that one? Yeah, pickpockets. Yes, I mean, they, they, were, they were... Dance halls were supposed to close at ten. Mm. And because they didn't very often, they tried to sneak them in. Then two of those police women were sent around to... Mm. Uh, to and they were great big fellas on the door. At this town, that these dance halls were great big robust men, and yet they sent two police ladies to sh shoot them out. <laughs> but it, it, it's interesting, this. But yeah, so you, you kind know. of went around the pubs keeping everybody in check. Yeah. yeah oh, yes, I went around the, oh, we knew all the pubs. Yeah. Um, uh, if, if there was a woman we thought was under 14, mm. then we roasted them out and said, we just went. <laughs> I did. On your back. You didn't go like that. <laughs> yeah. I would.